How's it going guys? Welcome back to some more Magic 2014. We're kicking back the single player campaign. And we're going to start off in Innistrad. Uh, the names of these chapters, you could say, are Planes of Existence. And each of these Planes of Existence has different properties. Um, there's a lot of history behind it. It's a lot of lore. And if you really care... Um, they can go super in depth on like the the MTG wiki and things like that. And if people are interested, I can uh, talk about it in the, a future episode. But for now, I'm just gonna say this is the name of the plane, and it has certain properties that are numerous and hard to list. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into this plane because we're planes walkers and we're chasing someone. We're chasing someone who did Chandra wrong, and we're trying to collect five items. So let's go ahead and jump into Innistrad and see who we have to duel. Ramaz gave me a pendant from a plane called Innistrad. The mark on it symbolizes some militant order there. If you can track down its owner, maybe they'll know something about Ramaz. Careful though, nothing's more dangerous than armed zealots. So we're looking for a man named Ramaz, who is a rogue planeswalker. Hmm. Ah. So I have to fight through these different scenarios, I'm assuming, to beat the Planeswalker. So let's go ahead and start Moreland Zombies. This is... that sounds blue-black. Zombies, blue, Moreland's... I mean, Zombies, black, Moreland, blue. Let's go ahead and start. Encounters are a way to test how your deck performs against a specific strategy. You play your deck as normal, but your opponent plays the same cards in the same order every turn. Recognizing the patterns in your opponent's play can help you beat the encounter. On Innistrad, you show the pendant to a villager in the gloomy province of Nefalia. She points you northwest to Thrabin. Crossing the moors, you become lost in the mists. The smell of death hangs in the murk. So it looks like... I'm going to go and stick with the green deck. Uh, actually, let's, let's spice it up. Let's try the red deck. I'm sure it'll be interesting. Let's go ahead and start the encounter. Uh, let's see what we got. We have a Torch Fiend, a Goblin Arsonist, Pilgrim's Eye... Yeah... This is pretty good. We'll keep this. I have a cheap creature, I have another cheap creature, I have something to do on turn 3, and I have something to do on turn 4. You want to make sure your mana curve is good. That's that's uh, that's what's referred to as your mana curve. Your 1, 2, 3, then 4. So let's keep the hand. And it looks like I go first. And I'm going to go right into it and throw down some Goblins. Typically, blue-black decks are very slow. Not as slow as green decks, but uh, they, they take some time to get going. He's playing a Diagraph Ghoul. He enters the battlefield tapped, and he's a 2-2. So a 2-2 for one is very good, but you pay by having him enter the battlefield tapped. Which is nothing. That's, that's normally irrelevant, because who else... Who, who plays creatures on the first turn anyway. So if you go first and you play him, and then I go second and play my first guy, it doesn't matter that he came into play tapped. You just got a 2-2 for nothing. So let's go ahead and play Torch Fiend now. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and attack with our 1-1. One -one. Bam, one damage. All right. Next up, what do we have? And we move to combat. He's gonna attack me for two damage. I'm going to take that damage because I'd like to kill him as fast as possible. And I don't want to lose my creature to kill his creature. Not yet, because this creature has an effect. Um, walking corpse. It's a two-two. Okay. Can this deal damage to creatures? Okay, yeah, so if a 2-2 two -two blocks this, he would take one damage from his attack, and then if it dies, I can assign one more point of damage to a creature or a player. So he can kill two twos. So that's what I'm going to bank on. So no matter which one of these he blocks, that card will die. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and play our Rigathon Firecat. He's a 4-1, a vanilla 4-1. We're going to go ahead and attack. 
Now let's see which one they block. Okay. One damage to the Moreland zombies. And they trade, they both die. Another swamp. Let's see, move to combat, he's gonna attack me for two damage. Oh, he's not gonna attack, he's gonna block. And that will be bad for him. Because now, I'm going to blow up that creature and punch him square in the face. So, that creature's going bye-bye. And what that card does is deals four damage to a creature, and two damage to that creature's controller. So now I'm just gonna go whack! Turn dude sideways. That's what red decks do. They turn dudes sideways, because they attack. One damage, and four damage. So, the, the idea behind a red deck is just burn them down as fast as possible. Because you can see I'm running out of cards. Uh, it, I don't have a lot to work with anymore. I really kind of have to win with what's on the field. And as long as I can continue to draw kill spells, I should be okay. When Ghoul Razor enters the battlefield, return a zombie card at random from your graveyard to your hand. Okay. I was trying to look at the graveyard. He's probably going to get that Dire Grab Ghoul back. He has two zombies, and they're both 2-2s, two -twos, so I'm not worried. And he doesn't have enough mana to play them. So let's go ahead and I have two options right now. I can play the Torch Fiend, which I've already played once before, or I can play the Pilgrim's Eye. I'm going to play the Pilgrim's Eye because Pilgrim's Eye says it's a 1-1 with flying, which means only creatures with flying or reach can block it. And when it comes into play, I may search my library for a basic land card, reveal it, and then put it in my hand. So this is going to give me a creature and a land. So I'm going to play that because then I'll have five mana and I'll be able to play other things. Like this guy, my 5-4. I'll just grab one, doesn't matter which one, because it's all the same color. Play that land, and then play my Torch Fiend. I'm going to go ahead and attack with this guy. Not my big guy yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait, because I don't want to trade my 4-1 for a 2-2. Two -two. I'm gonna attack with him, and if he doesn't block it, he takes a damage. If he does block it, he loses his guy. So it looks like he's gonna take the 1 damage. Okay. All right. Fifth mana. See now he now he could start playing things that are that are kind of scary. But instead he plays a two-two zombie. So I've got nothing to worry about really. Just keep the pressure on. You you put them into a situation where they can't attack you. Because if they do, they die. Hmm, let's see. This really doesn't help me at all. Um, it's a 2 mana, 2 1, that says you can pay a red, and a target creature you control gains haste until end of turn. What haste means is a creature can attack the same turn it's put down. That would be good to play this guy, and then next turn play this guy and give him haste, but that counts on two things. One, he doesn't die, and two, I draw a mana next turn, which I probably won't. Uh, I mean, I could, but it's it's kind of risky, so instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this guy to ensure that next turn I have a 5-4 to attack with. And I'm going to go ahead and... We're just going to turn dude sideways, because that's what red decks do. Attack with everything. And you just keep that constant pressure on as red, and they just throw away creatures. They're just throwing them away, because they have to block you to not die. So it looks like they're going to block. Okay, they both die, and they both die. So, now look at his field and my field. Favorable trades. Those weren't favorable trades, that was one for one, but I'm in a better position than he is. He's, uh-oh. Endless right at the beginning of your upkeep, put X 2-2 two, two black zombie tokens under the battlefield, where X is half the number of zombies you control rounded down. This would be a problem. This would be a huge problem. Uh, whenever you have things like that that you don't care if they die and you block with it, those are called chump blockers. A 2-2 token is a perfect chump blocker, because it would kill most of my things, and they don't care. They, it's just zombie tokens. And they get zombie tokens every turn, so... If I hadn't done that, and he played this, next turn, he would get a zombie token. 
And then if you played a zombie, he'd get two zombie tokens, etc., etc. But it doesn't look like this guy is a one, two, three. Okay, if he doesn't have a kill spell, I can win. So I'm going to go pay the two for the Crimson Mage. I'm going to pay one to give him self haste. And then I'm going to attack with everything for exactly eight damage. I'm sorry, it's actually nine damage. He's a two one. So let's punch some people, turn dude sideways. And he might have something, probably doesn't. We'll find out. Mm, nope, nothing. He's dead. GG, no re. Five damage and two damage. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I win and I should unlock some cards. I got Inferno. 7 mana, instant, which means it can be played at any time. It deals 6 damage to each creature and each player. It's, uh, very red. <laughs> Let's go back to the campaign, and we'll do another one this episode. I'll do 2 encounters per episode, and then the duel with the Planeswalker as its own episode. So I'm gonna play with my green deck again. Let's actually go put that new card we got in the, the green deck. Deck Manager. Hunter Strength. Mm hmm. Unlock full deck. What's that? Oh, they want me to buy it. You can uh, you can skip the the unlocking of stuff by buying it. But I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to. Oh wait, did I just put it in the deck? Yeah, there's 61 cards in the deck, so I probably put it in already. It costed four mana if I remember correctly. Let's see. Yep, okay, just put him in the deck. Uh, you normally don't want to put 60, any more than 60 cards in your deck. 60 is the minimum, because whenever you start adding cards to the deck randomly, you're, you're basically watering the deck down. You're making your draw more random, which is a bad thing. You want your deck to be as consistent as possible. You want to, ideally, you would draw the exact same hand every game. And then you could, if you could ensure that, you would build your deck around it and you would build your deck to win very quickly or to have a very specific plan. So if you had a hundred card deck, you would be maybe very versatile, but the odds that you would draw a specific card are very low. So you don't normally want to do that. Uh, this is a bad hand. I can't do anything until turn seven, so we're gonna draw a new hand. And this isn't that great of a hand either, but it looks like we're gonna have to keep it. Um, you get one free redraw in this game, and every redraw after that, you draw one less card. So we're going to go ahead and stick with this and uh, play it out. Hope we don't die. And they went first. And uh, they played a Shadowborn Apostle. A deck can have any number... Oh god. A deck can have any number of cards named Shadowborn Apostle. This says, Pay a black and sacrifice six creatures named Shadowborn Apostle. Search your library for a demon card and put it onto the battlefield. That's pretty strong. Uh, that's I'm going to have to be careful. Because I'm a very slow deck, and if he gets all those things out in time... What that deck probably is, is it's probably full of those little cards, land, and a couple super scary demons. So he's doing what I was talking about earlier... He was ensuring that he draws specific things. He's ensuring that he draws just this, he plays a bunch of them, and then he sacrifices them all and gets a super scary demon. Yep, there's the other one. He's probably going to play two of them. Yep, there it goes. <laughs> oh man, this is going to be hard. Hmm, it's not good. I'm probably going to lose. Hmm. See, this would be a great deck for the red deck to play against. Ouch. This is hurting me. Yep. Damage, damage, damage. Oh, another one. Two cards left in hand. One of them's probably a land. Uh-huh. Please don't be a sixth one. That would be awful. Not that it matters. I mean, he could play it next turn and still activate the ability. Oh, I moved to combat? Shit, I don't want to do that. Not that it matters. 
Oh, buddy. This is gonna be hard. Oh, real quick. Trample? Trample means if I would assign combat damage more than what it would take to kill the creature that blocked it, that damage gets trampled over and hits the controller. So if he blocks this with one of his 1-1s, one Trample says that he only blocks one of it, so the extra two hits the person. Trample's very green and very good. Oh, he's about to swing at me. What? There's the land. He has one more card in hand. And there's the sixth one. And here comes the demon. I wonder what it's going to be. What does this say? Wait, what? What, what just happened? What did that demon do? What is this? Oh, great. When Shadowborn Demon enters the battlefield, destroy target non-demon creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you, there are fewer than six creature cards in your graveyard, sacrifice a creature. So, look at that. All the good, none of the bad. So, this is going to be a large issue for me. Hmm. Is he flying? Of course he does. He's a demon. Demons have flying. This is bad. Let's see. Let's play some trolls. Uh, not out of the woods. I mean, I'm not completely gone yet. Uh, next turn I can play another mana, and if I can swing and get him to block, I can give it plus seven, plus seven, and trample. Or if he doesn't swing with it, ooh, that would be good. We'll see what happens. He's probably going to punch me in the face with it, though. That's what I would do if I was him. He didn't. Hmm... Let's see. We're going to play this card, and we're going to put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature, and then we're going to make it fight that creature. Boom. Now this has a plus one. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a plus one. Yeah, plus one, plus one. And then he took one damage, so he's back to where he was for defense. But... I'm hoping I can stall long enough, because now he has no cards in hand. That that was his trick. He just played his trick. And if I can beat it, there's nothing he can do about it. I'm not going to attack this turn. I'm going to wait, because he would just kill me. But next turn, if he draws a land... Ooh, is he going to swing? Nope, he's going to block. Okay. That's probably a bad idea. He should probably race me. Damn, he has another creature. Okay. I need this to be the only creature because this card says it must be blocked this turn if able. Ooh, I got another one of those. So we're going to play another one of these, make this creature even bigger, and then we're going to kill that creature again. So what I'm doing now is I'm hoping that he'll draw a land, because if he does, he's done for. I'm going to beat the crap out of that demon, because I can make it block and my creature would get plus seven, plus seven, so he would be a... A 13 11 or a 13 12 which is huge that's absurd but only for one turn so if he draws a land uh, he's attacking me this turn hmm bastard I can't block it hmm damn it another damn it damn it damn it it's okay Aha! Something with reach. That's good. Okay. It's not the end of the world. Because now I can block it. Hmm. Let's go ahead and attack. Oops. Zoom out. Let's go ahead and start attacking. Start whittling down some of that health. No, stop it. Attack. There we go. No cards in hand still. Or he doesn't have any cards in his hand. So is he going to block it, or is he going to take it? He's just going to take it to the face. Okay. He's probably going to try and race me. We'll see. He should have been attacking the whole time. That was poor planning on his part. Do I want to block it? Hmm. I don't think I do. I think I'm okay. 
I'll skip blocking this turn. Ouch. Okay, I'm kind of hurting, but... Okay, that's fine. I don't care about those anymore. He's not going to do it again. One of us is going to die before he can summon another demon. Get some land. Okay. Now. Man. Alright, let's count up the damage. Okay. I think... Hmm. Okay. We're going to cast this. And I'm going to put it on my troll. He's going to get plus 7, plus 7, and trample. He's going to punch someone in the face. He's a 13, 12. And he's coming right at your face. So if he blocked it with everything, the most damage he could block is uh, 11 of it. So what's going to happen is I'm going to swing, and he's going to block with everything he has, or he's going to die. So let's go to combat. And we're just going to beat the crap out of him. And I can swing with this guy because he has vigilance. He can still block next turn if I need to. So, he's in a bad spot now. Oh, wait, okay, I was about to say, if he doesn't block the thing, he's dead. Okay, so that dies. And then he takes one, and then twelve to the face. Yeah, look who's laughing now, demon man. And he's got no cards in his hand. So he won't be able to attack now. Oh, he's gonna go for it. Okay. Um, I'm going to block because I don't know what he has in his hand. So let's go ahead and block. This will die, but that's okay. And he's going to play another dude. Okay. Come on, give me something with trample. What is this? Nothing. Damn. I think I might lose. Hmm. It's not good. Okay. Let's... Let's play everything. Let's just play all the things. It's gonna be close. Now, let's hope he doesn't draw another creature. If he doesn't draw a creature, he loses. If he does draw a creature, he still can't attack me, because he'll lose. Oh, actually, I'll just attack. And then he has to block. Yeah, I'll just attack. He has to block or he'll die. So he's going to lose that one creature. And then if he doesn't play... Nope, he loses. That's it. Game. Um, assuming he only has creatures in his deck and demons, I now have two creatures to attack with. Uh, three creatures to attack with next turn. So even if he draws a creature and plays it, he has two creatures to attack with. I have three to... Uh, he has two creatures to block with. I have three to attack with. One of them will get through and hit him and he'll lose. Unless he has something like a spell in his hand, in his deck. In which case... Yep, he's gonna go for it. Oh, I hope he can't do one damage to me. That would be really sad. Uh-huh. Ooh, what can he do? Nothing. Alright, yeah, we did it. I don't care about your one little guy. And see, he has no cards left in his hand, so I know there's nothing else he can do. And I'm gonna play a mana. And I'm gonna blow up a land, just because I can. Boom! Sorry. That card said, destroy target non-creature permanent. A permanent is anything that stays on the battlefield after it's cast. Unlike instants and sorceries who go to the graveyard after they're cast. Creatures, uh, land, enchantments, artifacts, things like that, those are permanents. Non-creature means it can be anything but a creature. So, little insight there. And now I attack with everything. And he dies. No, stop that. I want to go to combat. And swing, swing, swing. Bam! And that should be GG. Yep, he's gonna block there. That's fine. Boom. Dead. I don't know why we're going to the negative life. Hooray! We did it. And what'd we unlock? We unlocked Wormskin Forger. Oops. And I got a new persona. I can be a scary witch zombie thing. Hmm. But let's see what this card does. 
It's 7 mana for a 2-2. Two -two. That says, when Wormskin Forger enters the battlefield, distribute 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters among 1, 2, or 3 target creatures. That's kind of bad, actually. So, essentially I'm paying 7 mana for up to 5 points of power. And toughness. That's... eh. That's not that great. If you look at this little D14 right here, this is the symbol of the set. This is D14, which is the, the name of the game. It's the 14th edition. But uh, this color here, black and white, is a common, which means it's, it's a low power card. One step up from that is an uncommon, which is a silver symbol. Uh, one step up from that is a rare, which is gold. And the highest tier is a mythic rare, which is a, um, like a copper bronze color that's shiny. But yep, that's all the time I have for today, guys. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Aaron, and I'll see you next time.